Hello, Mr. Adams coming to you from the classroom this time. I'm here today getting some, taking care of some things to uh, wind down the year, but wanted to talk to you about Lesson 126, go over a few things. I'm going to do two separate videos because uh, you may be having struggle with one and not struggle with the other. But we're going to be talking first about number one in Lesson 126, and that is the circle graph and what to do with that. Now, if some of you have not been paying attention, not been watching the Abeka videos, he's doing a good job of covering this material, but if you're not watching those, you're not going to know what's going on. Also, if you don't still have a compass and a protractor, you will not be able to accurately do number one. Or in the next lesson, you won't be able to do number one or number two. Right? So you're missing how to do these things and you're going to be hurting when it comes to the test because you have to do these things for the test I believe and it's coming up next week last day of school Wednesday or Thursday next week is your last math test so let's go ahead and take a look at number one on lesson 126 you have to draw a, gra a circle graph so it says first to draw a circle with a radius of one and a quarter inches all right so you set your compass at one and a quarter you draw your circle to have a diameter of what two and a half right then best thing to do since you're using if you're using a compass you can put a dot there where your compass was that's your center straight line use a straight edge straight line out to the edge there's your radius that's your radius all the way through is a diameter halfway through is a radius radius is half the diameter diameter two times the radius key that you know that and that you use that and how you figure diameter and radius right now circumference of a circle and so on we'll get to later right now though we're going to be taking a look at these circle graphs and how to accurately figure out what you've got so in number one it says if the school's track and field day joel earned three first place ribbons two second place ribbons one third place ribbon and four fourth place ribbons if you look at that problem if you don't have this lesson in front of you, pause the video, go get it, and come back. All right? So, here we go. What you write out here is you had three first, two second, one third, and four fourths. Now, what, how many total ribbons did he have? Well, ten. Ten total ribbons. I'll put my microphone on here. Maybe the audio will get a little bit better. Okay. So, 10 ribbons total. All right. That's what you base everything. You have to know the total before you can figure the percentages. So you got to figure the percent first. All right. So if I have the first place, I have three out of what? 10. I have three out of 10. So if I have three out of 10, then that's a fraction. Three out of 10. Here I have two out of 10. Here I have 1 out of 10, and here I have 4 out of 10. It's out of 10. How easy is that to do percent? You know the decimal equivalence of each one of those. That's 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0.4. Percent means hundreds. All right? So if it's 0.3, that's 0 0.30, isn't it? If it's 0 0.2, that's 0 0.20. If it's 0 0.1, that's 0 0.10. If it's 0 0.4, it's 0 0.40. And you change those to percents, 30%, 20%, 10%, 40%. Right? Pretty simple to do that. Okay? So change the, per the decimal to a percent. You, take, you move the decimal place two places here. Put a percent sign. Percent sign. Percent sign. Percent sign. All right? So... You've got 30%, 20%, 10%, and 40%. You say, well, what do I do with that, Mr. Adams? Well, you're going to divide this circle into a 30% block, a 20% block, a 10% block, and a 40% block. But if you don't have a protractor, you will not be able to do that accurately. You'll have to guesstimate or estimate. And if you know what angles look like, you can do that a little bit. But if you don't have a protractor, you can at least write down how many degrees you're going to make that. 30% of the circle is going to be first place. 
Second place is 20%, all right? So how many degrees are there total? How many degrees are there in a circle? I'm hearing the crickets, all right? 360 degrees, right? 360, so if I spin around in a circle, if somebody does a 360, they've gone around all the way around in a circle. 360 degrees, all right? So we have 360 degrees in a circle. I want to figure what 30% of that is. I want to figure what 20% of that is, what 10% of that is, and what 40% of that is. Okay. So I'm going to look at this. Oh, 10% of this, 10%, that's 36 degrees. 10%. Move the decimal place, one place. That's it. 36 degrees. All right. Now, 30%, 20%, 20%. What's two times 36? 72. Okay. And you know, I'm multiplying, I'm gonna be multiplying by the decimal, right? The decimal equivalent of this. There's 30%, but that's again, it's just by 0 0.30 times this. 0 0.20, or just 0.3, you don't need to use the zero. All right? You don't need to use the zero when you multiply. That's fine. If you wanna use it to be safe, go right ahead. Right. So, I'm gonna be multiplying here 0.30 times this, all right? And that's going to give me 108 degrees. 30% of 360 is 108 degrees. So what I would do then is I take my protractor and I've got my radius and I would put it here and I would line up my vertex of my protractor with the center and I would see where 108 is. I know that 90 degrees is right here. So 108 is probably going to be right about in here somewhere. But if you use your protractor, you would see right where that is, and you would put a dot, and then you would take your straight edge, and you would connect that to the vertex, and you'd have your 108 degree. And that would say, okay, that's 30%, and that's first place. You label it, and that's how you make your circle graph. You do that for each one of them. You're gonna take 20% times this. That's gonna give you 72 degrees, which is gonna be, and you have to turn your paper. You gotta turn your paper. This is gonna be the line then that you would use <laughs> to make your 72. You gotta turn the paper, line up the protractor, okay, and take care of it that way, all right? So 108 and 72. I said 72. 108 and 72. That's what? That's 180, isn't it? 108 and 72 is 180. What's 180? Oh, that's a half a circle. So I would know that my next one, there you go. Those two together, this is, that's 30%. This is uh, 20%. All right, and that's second place. because I know 108 degrees there, 72 degrees there, 72 and 108 is 180. That's half your circle. There you go. These other ones are gonna make up the other half in different percentages. This is only gonna be 36 degrees. This is 40%, all right? You can figure out this is 36 degrees, so you would then use this as your vertex again, figure your 36 degree angle and take care of that. This is 40%. You can figure out what that's going to be. 40% ends up being 144 degrees, all right? And you fill it in, and that's how you do it. You got to figure how many. Got your total. Figure your, your, figure your fractions. Make them percents. Okay? Multiply by the decimal equivalent of that times 360 to find out how many degrees. It's a multiple-step problem, okay? But I've given you the steps... Do it a step at a time. Pause the video. Do one step at a time. Pause the video, all right, and watch these. All right, I will come back with another video on numbers two, three, and four, the radius, diameter, circumference, and area. We're having a lot of problems with that, as I'm seeing. Little things that you're doing wrong, but little mistakes in math makes you get the problem wrong. All right, we'll be back. Bye.